You are listening to the Biblical Counseling Podcast, where we believe the Bible is sufficient and answers life's problems. I'm your host, Pastor Jeff Christensen. This podcast is for everyone in the body of Christ, staff pastor, church leader, caring homemaker, the responsible businessman, everybody. But it's also for my Calvary Chapel University students. Shout out, hello to you guys. All of us are called to offer counsel regularly. And we every day need a word of counsel from the Lord. So these episodes are designed to assist you in learning to give godly counsel. Also to develop discernment in evaluating counsel that you receive. So it's my prayer that these podcasts, that these episodes will enlarge your vision of the Lord Jesus Christ as a wonderful counselor. God bless you. Grab your Bibles. Let's get started. See you on the inside. Think about biblical counseling. What do you think about? Usually people think counseling is for people that are, you know, deeply troubled emotionally, but we all need a word of counsel. We need to discern the type of counsel that we receive, and we need to be warned about counseling man's way versus God's way. If you're born again, Bible-believing Christian, it's very important to just be, be alert to the ways of the world because they've crept into the church, into the body of Christ. It's in the books, in the best of the best bookstores, which is, you know, sometimes, you know, the bookstore uh, manager or even the, the leadership aren't familiar so much with the counseling world because it has a mixture in it. It's hard to discern. And so we want to be very careful about those things. In today's podcast, though, however... We're going to look at God's way in counseling concerning prayer. So when when God is allowed to be who he is in your life, in the life of those that you counsel, he's the wonderful counselor. And in him, in a relationship with Christ, is filled with all the knowledge and wisdom that we would need for life and godliness. And he works that Uh, knowledge into our life as we walk the path of discipleship by the the Word of God, as we open the Word as illuminated by the Holy Spirit, empowered to walk by the Holy Spirit. It all takes place in prayerful, God-seeking hearts. That's today's podcast. The Spirit of the Lord works in prayerful, seeking hearts. We're going to look at two majestic prayers in the New Testament of Paul. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, and Ephesians 1, starting at verse 17. So our last uh, time we were together talking about God's way in counseling, we talked about the Holy Spirit. And that would lead us to this prayer. The Spirit of the Lord works in prayerful, seeking hearts. It shows our dependence upon Him Our faith in Him, our trust in Him, is when we pray. And Colossians 1.9 is such a prayer. We're called in the Word to pray at all times. It says to pray without ceasing. In other words, a heart that's just turned toward the Lord day by day, step by step, moment by moment, issue by issue, conversation by conversation. We're just having a, a heart tuned into the Lord and at any moment ready to pray. It's the way of the Lord. I mean, prayer is not to the Christian life something that we do only when we fold our hands and we sit down to eat or as a ritual we do when we go to church. I know some uh, traditions, the way prayer is taught, it's rote prayers that are in a book and and uh, we're not to pray that way. Really, prayer is to the Christian, to the Christian life like breathing is to our physical life. It's not something we do with an announced time and place. And that's great though. You know, we can have a, what's called directed prayer and prayer at an announced time and place. But I think prayer for you and I is appropriate any moment of any day. And it is just an attitude of a heart tuned in toward the Lord, ready at any time, to break into a verbal spoken prayer. 
and sometimes a praise or silent arrows of prayer shot heavenward to the throne of God for the issues we face here on earth. Prayer is powerful. Think about it this way, okay? You know, I'm addressing typically in this podcast biblical counselors, those that are being equipped for counseling, for counseling God's way. There you are, the phone call comes in. Maybe it's the boss calling us into work or somebody's meeting with us for lunch and they have a broken heart or we're just spontaneously stopped and asked for help. We don't have to tell them, well, I need a half hour to pray before I can answer you. We just talk to the Lord right there. We approach the throne of grace boldly. Why boldly? Not with arrogance, but boldly means or boldness means that you're aware you have guaranteed access. I can boldly come to the throne of grace. I can speak to the living God himself. You know, it's kind of like my daughter can knock on my door. She doesn't have to knock. She could just barge right into my office and she could say hello anytime, any day of night. If she's woke up and she's scared, she can come to her dad. No problem at all. She can interrupt me in the middle of a phone call. It doesn't matter. I want to hear from my baby girl, no matter what, anytime, anywhere. You get that if you're a parent. And as God the Father would think of it that way, he does. That you can speak to him, the living God, guided by the Holy Spirit, of course, and through the name of Jesus. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to work in prayerful, seeking hearts. Luke 11 you know, it talks about God giving the Holy Spirit to those who ask him, and that's what it is. It's it's initially that fullness and guidance and in full measure, a response to prayer, we are given the Holy Spirit. And so in Colossians and in Ephesians and all over in the Bible, there are biblical prayers. You can't pray any better than having a framework a guideline uh, that is in the Word of God. If you're just not sure on what to pray, man, get into the Word. Find these prayers. And then as you're in the Word and God stirs your heart on a verse, a phrase, an issue, turn it into a prayer. You know, when I read the Bible and I'm reading it, it's God speaking to me. But then I turn it around and I have a conversation with God. So it's a two-way conversation. I hear from God when I'm reading the Word, and when I'm stirred in an, you know, on a verse or an issue's going on and my mind is starting to think about something that's going on in my life, I turn it around to prayer. And then I read some more, and then I pray some more. It's just a conversation. And the easiest place to do this, for me and for you and for many is prayers that are already recorded in the Word. I mean, they're recorded by the Spirit for that moment in time, but it's also applicable for all kinds of moments in time that the body of Christ, the people of God, read these inspired prayers that contain God's will for our lives. And so at any moment you find yourself in a need, turn to Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, and read it. And then begin to pray it. Paul says this, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And listen what he's asking for. So, the people at Colossae, it's the church at Colossae, Paul heard that they were abounding in fruitfulness. He never met them, by the way, in this specific context. And he heard about them. He says, I'm praying for you all the time. And he says, I ask, verse 9, that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. What a powerful prayer. What a great prayer. If you don't mind, and if you got your Bible open to Colossians 1.9, you would put Jeff Christensen in the margin. Pray this for Jeff. I would so greatly appreciate that. If you would open your Bible and, and, and just write in the margin, pray this, and then put an arrow, Colossians 1.9, for Jeff Christensen. And then every time you read that passage, if you would just shoot an arrow to heaven 
concerning things on earth, that would be, oh, so awesome. I would appreciate you praying for me in Colossians 1.9 to be filled with the knowledge of his will. And then look what it's accompanied with all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I mean, that's perfect for any kind of counseling situation you find yourself in. If you're at a loss and you just need something, it applies to everybody every time all over the world, no matter who they are, you seek uh, this prayer or you seek God's counsel. And when we seek people's counsel, here's a great prayer for us to pray. You know, when people come to you for help and Listen, this is what I've said. Maybe you've said it. I've definitely heard people ask me this or declare this. <laughs> they say something like, man, I appreciate your prayers. Here's what I'm facing. And they just dump it. And I just don't know the will of God on this. Well, have you heard somebody say that? Sure you have. Have have I said it? Yeah. Many people come to us seeking counsel. And they might not even think of it as seeking counsel or guidance necessarily. They're just hurting maybe, needy, hungry for the Lord. They just need help. They want help. They want advice. They want a listening ear. And for some reason, God has crossed your path or that turned them toward you. Maybe they know you. They know us, they love you, we love them, they trust you, and they know we love God and his word. And boom, we're the counselor. I mean, the human instrument of God's counsel. We're in the hands of the wonderful counselor. How about just praying with this person? Why don't you just say, hey, why don't we pray for a second? And then jump right into Colossians 1.9 that we might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You know, in 1 John 5, it tells us that if we ask anything according to his will, we know we've been heard and we have that which we have requested. Well, Colossians 1.9, this prayer is the will of God. And so when you find prayer in the scripture, that just is expressing your heart, you're just thinking... I don't know what to say or how to say what I need. And you read a prayer and you say, this is it. Pray it back to God. And our situation and praying them to God, whatever our situation might be, and utter it directly from your heart. I mean, really mean it. And and it's a great way to proceed with the Lord. And, and you know, when you're seeking God's counsel, it's a great way to pray. But when you're giving counsel, of, of course, and God is going to hear and answer a prayer like that because it stands on the full-on reality that the Lord is being who he says he'll be, the wonderful counselor. And, you know, it's, it's the Holy Spirit guiding us into counsel. It, I think it fits great. I, I love this prayer. And many, many times have I turned to it, even now, Lord, Work your way and your will in this situation. And I just turn it into prayer. Here's another one. We'll, we'll do this, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Another great prayer in the scriptures. You know, Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3, just great prayers. Two of the greatest prayers in the entire New Testament. Um, and, you know, here's what Paul Paul is saying. You know, I'm making mention of you in my prayers in verse 16. And then he prays for these people, listen to this, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. You could mark my name down there as well if you'd like. I would appreciate praying Ephesians 1.17 for Jeff Christensen. Anybody that prays that for me, I'll be forever grateful because I know, I know, I have a convicting, convincing um, understanding that that if you pray that for me, God will answer it. And so thank you for your prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you, dear student, the spirit of wisdom 
in the revelation and the knowledge of him. The knowledge of him. Knowing him. That's what my key, oh, I don't know, mission statement, knowing him and making him known. Knowing Jesus and making Jesus known. Through the counseling, you know, arena. Through my, you know, training my students. I mean... It's not just accumulating facts about him, the knowledge of him. It's involved. But here it includes a, an abiding relationship with him. I mean, this is a, a majestic prayer in the Bible, one of the, the majestic prayers. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you, in plural, for the saints, for the people of God at Ephesus and you too, anyone, anywhere, praying for any other saint. It's a, it's a majestic prayer. It's a beautiful prayer. It may give you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation in the knowing of him. You know, I would say the mountain peak of the New Testament would be dealt with right here. That the greatest need anyone and everyone has on the face of the earth is to know Jesus more in depth. I mean, it sounds presumptuous in that, but I'm not. It's not at all. It's biblically sound. I mean, the ultimate issue of all of life and creation and why we exist here on planet earth is knowing God. I mean, if you never never get to know God... I mean, that's the whole purpose of God creating you and us and people. And if not, the whole thing's been missed. And that's our greatest need in life is to know the Lord. And that's obviously, number one, initially being introduced through salvation, through the gospel. All of sin and fall short of the glory of God and the penalty of that sin is death. And and God so loved the world, you, you know, that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but ever is everlasting life and and that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we will be saved. I mean, when we meet any sinner that meets the Savior, here's the Savior's voice, here's the Savior calling that sinner to salvation, it's an introduction. It's how we meet the Lord. We get to know the Lord very first. We've been walking on the broad path to destruction. We respond to the calling of the Lord, and then we're brought onto the narrow path that leads to everlasting life. And that's what this verse is about. It's more than just getting to know him initially, but about growing in an acquainting acquaintanceship. I mean, a, a growing, ever-deepening relationship about knowing the Lord. I mean, it's nice to know um, when somebody comes our way as a counselor, listen, you already know the number one greatest need they have before they even open their mouth as they come to you. You're like, okay, I know exactly what they need. You know what I need. I need to grow in knowing the Lord more today than I did yesterday. And that's why I asked you to pray these prayers for me because that's the highest need. It's the most important need I, I have and you do and anybody you meet. And if they don't know the Lord already, that's the most important thing for them. Now, how you get them to that gospel message and introduction to the Lord is, you know, nuanced. It's relational. It's not uh, abrupt. It can be abrupt. It has, as the Lord leads by his Holy Spirit, it's not formula, for, a formulistic type of relationship. It's an unfolding, sometimes you're quick, to get the gospel message out, sometimes it's slower. But it's foundational. And Christians, their greatest need is those who already know the Lord. They need to know Him more as they study the Bible. They need to hear Him more. And we can help each other with that, the counsel of the Lord. We help each other get to know Him better. So doesn't that help? I mean, you already know, okay, number one, what's my priority? Either they need to get the, introduced to the Lord or they need to grow in the Lord. That's the whole path of discipleship and sanctification that we've talked about. And it comes through prayer. It's foundational. 
everyone you meet in any place, whoever asks you of any kind of help or hope or comfort or guidance or counsel. And, you know, people will come and a lot of times they want a specific action step. What's my next step? Well, we can point them to the Lord that can lead them to their next action step. A lot of times I say that to people. Well, you're going to have to hear from the Lord on this. And I help them get into the word or into a next step with the Lord. But I really think if I give them a direction and then it flops, they take that step and I'm thinking, well, I'm not God. I mean, there are certain things that are obvious, like, you know, sin and don't sin. You know, if you're sinning, stop sinning. You know, I think there are things that are obvious in the word, but but when it comes to guidance and some of those areas that we just need wisdom from the Lord, I like people to hear from him because when he tells them, it's him empowering them. And then it's permanent. They have a conviction by it. I always say to people that are making decisions, you know, what passage of scripture has the Lord impressed upon you that you've heard from him? You got it. There's a conviction there. And we might know, know that action step that people are looking for, but we could point them to the Lord who will give them the comfort and strengthen them where there is no step to take, but only an intercession or a petition or a praise to pour out in prayer. And they get to know the Lord a little better, which leaves them prepared and equipped for the next issue that comes in life, and it will come. A lot of times if we're short-sighted, we'll just help them with their immediate issue. But if we're training them to go to the Lord in prayer, future issues can be addressed pretty quickly. A couple more things I want to talk about as we wrap this up. Remember, God's way in counseling. He's the wonderful counselor. How wonderful is he? He's filled with all the knowledge and wisdom that the universe contains. Everything is found in Jesus Christ. And when he is allowed to be the counselor, he'll lead us down a path of discipleship, which is growing us up unto sanctification. How does he get his counsel to us? If he's the counselor, he'll use his word, and it will be by the full-on, illuminating, empowering work of the Holy Spirit. And it takes place in prayerful, seeking hearts. Next time, we'll look at the one to another ministries, all involved in the body of Christ, church life. But before we go there next time, I wanted to kind of close here with a little bit of an Old Testament illustration of the life of David. Now, you remember David replaced Saul. And it says in 1 Chronicles chapter 10, a sad story about Saul. Saul died for his unfaithfulness which he had committed against the Lord because he did not keep the word of the Lord and also because he consulted a medium for guidance. But he did not inquire of the Lord. And, you know, then he died and the kingdom was turned over to David, the son of Jesse. So here's the sad truth. We in the body of Christ too often are not inquiring of the Lord, number one. And some are consulting mediums. That is, those that are not biblically um, grounded. There's competing worldviews out there, and we need to be warned that some of this counsel and guidance is false. and We need to be careful. There's a warning all throughout the Scripture. You know, God challenged Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 1. He, he said, run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. See now and know and seek in her open places. If you can find a man, if there is anyone who executes judgment, who seeks the truth. You know, they're far and few between that are seeking the Lord, that are inquiring of the Lord. For Samuel 13 says, the Lord sought for himself a man after his own heart. Men and women that are following the Lord, the, the Lord is looking for that person that is full of faith in the Holy Spirit, like Stephen in the New Testament. 
But there's one essential thing that we've been talking about in prayer. And David, David gave us some of that in 1 Samuel. Well, in the entire life of David, I'm going to read some verses about the essential thing concerning guidance. 1 Samuel chapter 23, David inquired of the Lord. That's what we do. We inquire. Are you inquiring of the Lord on a daily basis, on a regular, in the issue you're facing right now? Or if it's a small issue, a decision, a direction on anything. It can be big. It can be small. It can be relatively insignificant compared to a bigger decision that has consequences. But small decisions lead to big decisions. We are to inquire of the Lord like David did. For Samuel 23, David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? And then verse 4, David inquired of the Lord again, and the Lord answered him. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this troop? Remember, David was a, a warrior king, and he was going into battle. 2 Second, Second Samuel chapter 2, it happened after this that David inquired of the Lord, shall I go up? And where shall I go up? Second Samuel chapter 5 and 2 Samuel chapter 7. So David inquired of the Lord, Will you deliver them into my hand? And David inquired of the Lord. And he said, The Lord said to him, You shall not go up. Circle around behind them in front of the mulberry trees. And David did so as the Lord commanded. And then 2 Samuel chapter 7, then King David went in and sat before the Lord. Well, kind of like Mary would sit at the feet of Jesus, the one needful thing that she had found. Listen, David had an availability to the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. And it culminates in 2 Samuel chapter 8 with this. So the Lord preserved David wherever he went. Dear friend, dear student, and I say this with love, let us inquire of the Lord and pray about everything and trust that he will preserve you wherever you go. Amen and amen. Thank you for listening to the Biblical Counseling Podcast. You can learn more at jeffchristensen.org. That's jeffchristensen.org. And be sure to share this podcast with a friend. Well, may the Lord richly bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.